Hello ladies and gentlemen, Gabes to here. This is the heroic raid guide for Nurashen, the third boss in Siege of Orgabar. And as always, you can click on the bottom there for other videos related to this boss. Now, normally I would talk about raid composition first in these full guides, but we're going to talk about heroic versus normal. Because on this fight in particular, there's basically no difference. If you follow the WoW news closely, you may have heard about this. But effectively, this Norshin encounter got completely changed after the first week of Heroic. Uh, because, as Blizzard put it, it was just not designed with the mechanics in mind that players were using. Basically, the strategies they were doing. So, originally, um, most common kills early on were basically ignoring all the mechanics of the fight. That is, they were not using DPS players to go in the trial purify themselves and come out with zero corruption so they could do more damage to the boss. They would simply ignore all that, therefore not get any extra adds, and then just focus on DPSing the boss, uh, generally stacking a little bit more DPS, a little less healing to do this. And that was it. Uh, many, many kills um, were acquired this way. So this wasn't really the intention. So Blizzard drastically changed this fight and Unfortunately, they may have gone a little overboard in the other direction because they took away all the mechanics that made the heroic version heroic. Uh, now, this is literally the normal version of the fight, just the numbers are ramped up. They're just higher damage, higher you know, healing requirements, all that stuff. But, as far as the mechanics are concerned, as best that we could tell, everything is this exact same and all the heroic-only stuff that existed prior is now gone. So, with that in mind, we can talk about raid composition and how you need to go about doing your setup to meet the requirement for the fight. So for your raid composition, you'll want two tanks and two or three healers, standard stuff there. Uh, in this case, I would recommend two healers just to assist you with the DPS requirement. Uh, there are a few moments where healing can get a little bit hectic, but because the majority of the raid can be stacked up whenever it matters, that is when they're outside here in the main realm, uh, healing is very efficient, so uh, there are a few moments where healing got a little dicey, particularly when one healer was in the other realm, or uh, near the very end when the stack count on the boss is really high, he's doing a lot of damage. But if you handle essence spawns properly, and otherwise are stacked up and using raid cooldowns when you need to, uh, two healing is not a major issue. That said, you can three heal it, but just recognize that the DPS requirement is... Um, not super strict, but it's significant enough that you have to concern yourself with it. So you have a seven minute berserk timer, which is a hard berserk. It's a hard out. So once you hit that, your raid will all be killed instantly. So you can't really prolong the fight in any way. Therefore, if you have three healers, I would recommend one of them uh, be a disc priest or a mistweaver monk, someone that can effectively do some moderate damage while also doing healing to assist in that manner. But, as mentioned in the previous section, because this fight is mechanically almost identical to the normal version, uh, while there are a few things you can do to increase your overall DPS, we'll talk about those in a moment, uh, for the most part, you're just going to be playing this like you would the normal version of this fight. Uh, very little is different from, from the fight mechanically. Now, the rotation of members that you place into the trials in the priority is probably one of the more important things to consider for Heroic. Again, it's all kind of about meeting that seven minute berserk timer while sustaining the healing required outside and the DPS outside to handle the adds and the damage. So um, we found that unlike our normal version, the strategy we used for our trial pri priorities and rotation there was not sufficient enough to give us enough DPS to beat the berserk. So we had to change things up quite a bit or somewhat. Uh, but the overall goal and what ended up working was basically pushing DPS players earlier into that, that priority rotation to go into their trial phase. Uh, that way, the, the sooner that the DPS players can come out, the sooner they can have their corruption down to zero and stick on the boss, you know, along with the ads and stuff after that. So you can see the priority on the left there. Obviously, you don't know the players by name that are in our raid, but basically I can tell you it's DPS, DPS, healer, DPS, healer, DPS, 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 and then both tanks at the end. So, and again, we're two healing, so you would obviously throw in your third healer or wherever is convenient. Uh, the basic idea here is that 
we don't mind so much putting two DPS back to back uh, in this case because, or even multiple DPS in a row, um, because by that time we have strong enough healing outside with um, both of our healers active or they've already both been through the trial and are coming out with their buff. So the extra damage from the adds is not significant enough to matter once the healers are either both outside or they both have their zero corruption buffs and their healing outputs higher. So by pushing your DPS earlier and putting them back to back, obviously this means their trials will end quicker and you can start putting full damage on the amalgamation. Now, if you really want to up your DPS, be as efficient as possible, the next step would be to allow DPS that have already cleared the corruption, so they've gone in the trial and gone down to zero, to remain on the boss full time. And only DPS that have not gone in uh, up to that point would kill the ads. You might need some leeway here and there as you get toward the end of your DPS cycle. But essentially by doing this, you would obviously mean um, forcing every player to always do 100% DPS. So you're not having players that have the debuff uh, removed, they're at zero corruption, wasting their damage effectively by attacking the adds. They're just on the boss. But I'd only recommend that if you're finding that you're not meeting the Berserk timer, but your sustainability is, is significant. You're okay with it. The other consideration and probably the only difference on Heroic is that there are five orbs active in this fight instead of two, which you see on normal. So the final step you can, you can take if you really want to pump out the damage is to send in more than two people at once. Two is kind of the standard because you're used to that on normal, uh, that being the max, but with five orbs out on Heroic, you could send in up to five, right? So I wouldn't recommend doing that, but certainly three players would be doable. This is especially true if you decide to go with three healers uh, because you want to push your DPS through faster since they need more uptime on the boss effectively to meet that seven minute berserk. So especially if you're three healing, I would strongly recommend sending three DPS in right away. You will get a lot of spawns at once, but if you rotate raid cooldowns when all those essences are active, uh, make sure you kill the manifestations, soak up their orbs just like normal, all that good stuff. Then you should be able to recover from that pretty easily. Once your healers go in, they come back out after that initial three DPS. And then you kind of rotate through from then or, or whatever you're comfortable with. But basically getting three DPS up front would really push your DPS uh, on the boss quite high pretty fast. And that'll make a big difference. We should also briefly mention the heroic trials. So just like in normal, mechanically, these are the exact same. Um, but because everything's ramped up where you may not have paid attention really on the normal version because it didn't matter, you do have to somewhat pay attention on Heroic. Uh, so you'll see here if you look at the NPC health on the to the right of my chat bar where I'm mousing over right there, you can see that these NPCs are taking significant damage during my trial. And this is true for all of them pretty much. You know, the DPS players have to do more damage. Tanks are going to take more damage. And... You know, the, the NPCs that the healers heal also take more damage. So just be aware of that. That's all I really want to advise is that the heroic version is ramped up significantly enough that you have to be aware of what's going on more so than you would in normal. Uh, whereas normal versions, especially if you're overgeared, you can kind of just ignore this um, mechanic. And, and as long as you don't fail miserably, it doesn't really matter how well you do. So that's all. Just keep that in mind, especially for healers or tanks. DPS players will effectively always do what they did. It's just they might have to spend a little longer doing it. Um, but others may have to be a little more cautious there. I also want to briefly mention that as of the time of this recording, which is September 30th, uh, 2013, there's a bug in this encounter. And it may be fixed in the future, but for now, you may see it and wonder what's going on. So just be aware. This is with the Unleashed Anger ability, which is used by the boss on his primary target, the tank, pretty frequently on this fight. Now, the way this ability is supposed to work is that he uses this on his current tank. It's just a large physical hit that does damage to them, and that's pretty much it. However, what's actually happening is that more often than not, and I mean significantly more often than not, instead he seems to hit a target within melee range that is not the tank. As best we could tell, this tended to usually be pets and then secondarily, it would be melee DPS players. 
Our best guess was that this is based somewhat on range. Um, that is, it's not that the tank is getting out of melee range, but simply that targets that are closer to the boss's center of his hitbox are being preferred for this ability. Uh, like I said, pets were by far the most common hit, even when tanks were well within melee range. But secondarily would be me, <laughs> believe it or not, as a monk healer, usually because I tended to be close for my spinning crane kick heals, and then our DPS warrior, and then our tanks somewhere around there as well. So just be aware of this ability. If you notice it uh, hitting you know, pets or random players, DPS, not the tanks, try experimenting with pushing your tanks close to the melee um, center of the bosses you can get or right up in his hitbox while the rest of the raid tries to stay at max melee range. You do want to stay in melee because it's more efficient to avoid the um, swirl there and all that stuff. But for the most part, we found that uh, it seemed to be related to distance in some way. So, believe it or not, that is the entire thing for the heroic nourishing fight. It's, like I said, mechanically probably the easiest heroic guide I've done because I just say do normal. It's higher numbers. Uh, but yeah, that's that's pretty much what it is. So the only thing really to decide is that priority for your raid members, how they're going to do their trials, how many healers you want to use, uh, how many players at any given time you want to send in the orb since you have five available. And then from there, it's all standard stuff. You're still going to get five uh, extra manifestations at 50%, 40 and so on. And you're going to get uh, one from each DPS player that goes in. And then that's it. So handle the ads just like you do normally and uh, push the boss down and meet, meet the DPS requirement and you should be good to go. That is the heroic raid guide for Nourishen. As always, good luck. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed, please subscribe.